Alright guys, so here's the review of the Zelos Amber Orange Swordfish 40ml. So, if you're wondering where the box is for this, it doesn't actually come in a box, it actually comes in one of these really nice watch rolls. As did these two as well. So I've actually got an unboxing and first impressions of those three. So if you want to see that, I'll leave a link to that up in the top here. But you're not here for that, you're here to check out this watch. So, let's jump right into this now. So, first thing I need to mention is the dial colour. It's coming up yellow on camera. I don't know why my camera is coming up with it more yellow. It's more of like a pale orange, I'd call it. I'll be including pictures throughout the review, so you'll be able to see exactly what it looks like properly. I think it might be coming up like this on camera. Something to do with the loom, having a bit of a weird effect. But we'll talk about that more as we get into it. First off though, let's go over the dimensions. So, we've got a diameter of 40mm, thickness of 12 lug width of 20, and then the all-important lug to lug is coming in at 46. So, pretty nice overall dimensions. When it comes to the actual weight of this on the supplied bracelet, it's coming in at 178 grams with all the links included. And then size for my 7-inch wrist, it's coming in at about 161. I think I removed 4, maybe 5 links, something like that. So, seeing as we're talking about that bracelet, let's take a closer look at it now. So we've got some nice small flat links, nicely finished, all brushed apart from a polished chamfered edge. Just adds a little bit of detailing, a little bit of interest, as well as helping smooth it off as well. That carries on to the case. It's mainly brushed, a few little polished details here and there. As you can see on the top of those lugs and the top of the crown guards, as well as on that bottom edge as well. If we move around to the other side, you can see we've got those nice female end links. And again, just an interesting case design. Nice and angular, nice curvature to those lugs. They drop down pretty quickly, so it helps conform to wrist well. And you can also see we've got a nice flat crystal there, which protrudes ever so slightly. Almost like a top hat style, but not quite. And then when it comes to the crown, we'll get a quick zoom in on that, so you can see that in a bit more detail. So you can see we've got that Zelo logo on there. And it's really nicely finished again. You can see the detailing on the crown guards. Nice angular finishing. And nice brushing throughout as well. You can probably also see some nice detailing on that bezel. As well as the crystal and the way the two integrate. Nice angular look to that as well. Do you like the way they've done that? So now let's take a closer look at the dial. Talk about that in a bit more detail. So you can see we've got a really nice contrast between the black indices and the black hands. And then that nice, well is actually amber orange dial, but it's appearing yellow on camera as I said. Same with the bezel. I also really like that they've gone with the black day window as opposed to a colour matched one. I think it just integrates nicer with the indices, just matches them. So the dial might look flat from this angle, but it is actually a sandwich dial. So if I put it on the side, you should be able to see a bit better. We've actually got two layers there, so those indices are actually sunken onto the layer below. Just a nice effect. I do like that. Just adds a bit more interest, as do these hands as well. So, initially, depending on the angle you get it at, they look like solid black, but they've actually got some detailing on there. So they've actually got black loom, and then that outside bit is obviously just polished. When it comes to the text on the dial, it's fully printed. So the Zelo logo at the top, then Swordfish 40, because this is the 40mm, and then just below that you might not be able to see in white text, we've actually got 200 meters, 660 feet. So now, let's talk about the clasp in a bit more detail. So we'll flick around to that, and it is a really nice one. So we've got the Zelos branding on there again, and it's really nicely finished. That polished chamfered edge again, double bushes. Then, as you'd expect, we've got milled clasp, but the best bit is that we now have the ability to adjust it on the fly, and it works really well. So just push this button in, and then it slides back and forth really smoothly. You've got plenty of adjustment there as well. And then once you slide it out, you've actually got a solid piece that comes out on the top. Ooh, made a bit of a mess of that, just give it a quick wipe. So it basically looks like the clasp is extended, as opposed to looking more like the links. And again, push the button again and just slide it back in. As I say, really smooth, works perfectly. Now let's take a look at that case back. Talk about that in a bit more detail. So we've got that, I think it's sandblasted finish. Or be blasted, one of the two. And then we've got that polished swordfish in there, in the centre. Does look good. Then we've got swordfish 40, 200 metres. If we flick it round, read the other bit, this is where it gets interesting. 
So sapphire crystal, yep, kind of expect that. But then we've got these numbers here. So this is referring to the fact that this is number 25 of only 300 that's going to be made. So Zelos tend to do limited runs of most of their watches as far as I know. So this one is no different. And then when we're around here as well, you can also see we've got quick release bracelet, which is a really nice touch. Again, attention to detail with this. It's what it's all about. Oh, just thought I forgot to mention as well, when it comes to that bracelet, it's a screw link bracelet as well. Definitely my favourite. But now let's check out if we have actually got sapphire crystal on this using the trusty diamond selector tool. And yep, we have got sapphire crystal, but also, interestingly, we've actually got a sapphire bezel as well. So I'll quickly see if I can get this without sliding off. Let's try that again. Yep, and there we go. Sapphire bezel, which I do really like. Not something you see all that often. So now let's move on to the bit you've probably been waiting for. The most exciting part of this, and that's the loom. So if you haven't seen it before, you're in for a treat with this one. So got a little bit there already, but let's charge it up and show you what it's really like when it's fully charged. And there we go. So as you can see, it's that bright that my camera is actually struggling to pick it up. It's just kind of blown out and looking white. So give it a second or two, it should settle down. Then you'll see more what it's actually like. There we go. That's looking a bit better now. So you can see we've actually got yellow loom on this, despite it being an amber orange dial. So I think that's part of the reason why my camera was struggling to begin with and getting a more yellow color off of it. At least I think that's what it is. So you might be able to see we've actually got two different colors of loom on there. So as well as that yellow on that minute track, we've also got an ice blue of the BGW9, I think. Whereas the loom on the rest of the dial and the bezel is a colored C3. Or at least that's what it says on the listing anyway. So I'm assuming that's right. And then we've got that black loom on the hands, which offers a really good contrast. And again, with that color matched date window matching the indices, as opposed to the dial, you can see with the loom, at least, it looks even more just like one of the indices. So again, I do appreciate the way they've done that. It's just a really well thought out design, I think. And the contrast, as I say, between those black hands and that yellow dial is really, really good. So even when the loom does start to fade on the dial, you've still got a lot of contrast, even when it is lighter. So it's really usable for quite a long time. So I'll try and do like a bit of a time lapse so you can see how long this does last and how it fades and see what I'm talking about. So you'll be able to see as well how long we've actually been going, because obviously where the minute hand was to begin with, there's going to be a darker patch because obviously it's blocking out the loom on the dial. And obviously, because we've got a fully loomed bezel as well, we haven't actually got a loom pip. We've got, well, I suppose it's like a negative loom pip. Because the bezel is loomed, the loom pip is actually black. So you can see the dial and the bezel have both faded slightly, but nowhere near as much as I was expecting when I first tested this out. I've been really impressed with the longevity of it. As I say, it's far better than I expected. Fully loomed dial, I was expecting it to fade pretty quickly. But if I bring it in a bit closer now, you can see it's still looking pretty bright. And obviously, as I say, with that contrast between the black hands, it's still really, really legible. You still just about see that blue as well on the minute track. So if you're worried about the loom fading on these fully loomed dials, you needn't be. It's still there a decent amount, and it's still perfectly legible as well. So now let's talk about this bezel in a bit more detail, show you in action. So it's 120 click. Nice solid action. No back play at all. Solid defined clicks as well. And then when it comes to the alignment, quickly get this round here and I'll show you that. So perfectly aligned. Might look ever so slightly off due to the angle of the camera on here. But trust me, it is spot on. So you're probably wondering now, what's the movement in this? And yep, you've guessed right, it's the NH35. So quickly show you this in action now. So you've got a really nice action on the screw down ground. Nice and grippy. So I'll quickly move these hands out of the way, so I'll pull it out to the second position. So we can see that date window. Pop it back in, second hand re-engages. If we pull it out to the first position again, we can turn that date wheel over. 
And then if we push the crown back in, you can hand wind it. Again, nice smooth action, no issues there. All rock solid, as you'd expect with the NH35. So it's all shaping up to be a really nice watch. A lot of interesting little details on it, including, again, the detailing on those hands. I do really like the way they've done that, the way it just catches the light. When you see it in the pictures on the listing, it doesn't really come across. I thought they were just solid black, so that is a nice surprise. So now you're probably wondering, how much is all this going to cost you? It's not going to be as much as you think. If you haven't seen the previous video, obviously if you've seen that, you already know. So they're currently on sale for $299. That works out to about 246 pounds and about 281 euros but again they are limited numbers so if you do want to pick one up you're gonna to have to be quick because they do sell out pretty quickly as you probably know with zelos they're really popular and now i can see why so the question is are you interested in picking one up or are you still waiting to see what it's like on wrist and for me to go over the pros and cons if you are let's do that now so Here's what it looks like on my 7 inch wrist. And it does look really, really good, I think. Just all those little polished details catching the light. Including those details on the hands as well. I just, I really love it. And this bracelet, and the way it shimmers when the light catches it. Despite being fully brushed. It is a really cool effect. And obviously with this on the fly adjustable class, you can get the perfect fit. I definitely understand why people are so on to Zelos now, and why they say they're the best micro brand out there. I've been really, really impressed with this one. I'm trying to think if there's anything I'd actually change, any issues I have. I'm really struggling. Perhaps a high beat movement, but given the price, you can understand why it hasn't got one. Can you guys think of anything? Is there anything obvious I'm missing? If so, let me know down in the comments. But that's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.